Hey everyone, before this video begins, I just want to let you guys know about a great way that you can support the channel while getting U4 Domination now that it's going to be out in a few days or it's already out depending on when you're watching this video. You can simply go to nexus.gg slash the Red Hawk or click the link in the description or the pinned comment and it'll take you to the store right here. Of course, you guys know about Nexus. Lots of creators use it and this is done in collaboration with Paradox and it'll take you to my store right here. I've got various games, but most importantly, you can go ahead and click on U4 Domination right here and you can simply add it to your cart and once it's out or if it's already out you will very easily receive a steam key put it into steam and play it no fuss no nothing like that and most importantly as you can see right here the red hawk will receive a dollar 56 from this purchase so yeah if you don't already have domination and you want to get it make sure to click the link in the description and go to my store right here on nexus it's a great way to support the channel and play the game so thank you to everyone who buys it through this link right here all right Let's move on with the video. Hi everyone, and welcome to today's video where we're gonna be doing a guide for Byzantium for EU4 1.35 Domination. So let me start off by answering the question that everyone is thinking right now. Are the Ottomans more difficult to beat in this latest update where they've been significantly altered and updated and buffed? And the answer that you're going to get from me at least is no. The Ottomans are not more difficult to defeat in 1.35 as Byzantium. And in fact, I would even go on to say that they're easier to beat with other nations as well. So don't worry, you're not going to have more trouble getting your games as Byzantium started. So with that out of the way, let's move on with the video. Byzantium is a nation that starts off in the Balkans, and as you all know, historically in a couple of years, the Ottomans are about to wipe us out. And in U4, it's only going to be in one or two years. But by using this guide, you will have a great game as Byzantium. You'll go on to crush the Ottomans, conquer the entirety of the Balkans, conquer the entirety of Anatolia, and then go on to do whatever you want. Byzantium has a pretty good mission tree right here that gives us lots of claims and other bonuses to our Orthodox religion. Of course, we are Orthodox, and Byzantium's ideas are pretty good. We got advisor discounts, prestige siege, tolerance of the true faith, merc maintenance, goods produced and manpower, tax, stab discount, trade power, discipline, and missionary strength. So this very nice idea set, that very nice mission tree, and this guide will all help you get a great game started as them. And before we begin, if you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot. And if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them. Let's take a look at what we need to do as Byzantium. Alright, alright, here we are as Byzantium, and the first thing you're gonna do at the start is go into your states, and we're gonna summon the Diet. Go ahead and choose whichever agenda is best for you. Next, we're gonna give the clergy Religious State, Clerical Advisory Council, Expansionist Zealotry, and Religious Diplomats. We do have a bunch of new estate privileges added in Domination, but these are pretty situational and aren't very relevant for now. We might do some of them later. The same thing goes for any estate. Next, we're gonna give the Nobility, Primacy of the Nobility, Increased Levies, and Aristocratic Counselors, and then we're gonna give the Burgers Land of Commerce, Patronage of the Arts, Commercial Advisory Board, and Indebted to the Burgers. Next, we're gonna seize land. Now it's time to get started with the army setup and our first war, which is gonna be versus Epirus. So, the first thing we're gonna do is take this army and move it down here to Athens. Next, we can go ahead and also delete the fort in Morea. After that, we're gonna go ahead and hire three infantry regiments, here, here, and here. Then, we're gonna go into our advisors, start focusing on mill, and hire a diplo rep or improve relations advisor. Get him even if he's a level 2 guy. We're gonna fire him as soon as we get our alliances in order. I have one, if you don't have one, you may want to restart, although it's not very necessary. After we've gotten the advisor, you can go into the trade map mode and tell the merchant that's in Aleppo to go ahead and collect in Constantinople. Once he's there, we're gonna tell him to hostile trade so we can get a spy network on the Ottomans up quicker. That is gonna help out with sieges, we don't need claims on them, so once you get a spy network, don't claim anything, just let it keep going. Next, we're gonna go ahead and build 10 galleys, two in every province. So there we go, two in Constantinople, two in Athens, two right here, and then of course you're gonna run out of money, but don't worry, just get some more loans. And there we go, two more right here, and two more right here. 10 galleys in total. Now we're just gonna have to wait for this army to arrive here and for December 11th so we can declare on Epirus. In the meantime, you can give your ruler and heir military command. Put your heir in charge of this army right here. And with your free diplomats, you're gonna go ahead and try and ally Albania and the knights. If you can't do it right off the bat, don't worry, 
just start improving relations with both of them and we'll do it after our first war. Now it's time to wait for precisely December 11th. And remember, once the merchant has arrived in Constantinople, tell him to hostile trade. And there we go, once it's precisely December 11th, you're gonna go ahead and declare on Epirus. Usually they don't have any allies at this point, if they do, restart. I did a couple of trial runs earlier and they never allied anyone in this patch. Of course it has happened in previous patches, so it might happen in this patch as well. But before you declare on Epirus, check to see if you can rival them, in my case I can't, so it's no big deal. And by the way, speaking of rivals, don't rival anyone just yet. And like I said, on December 11th, go ahead and declare on Epirus for the reconquest of Arta right here. And there we go. You can go into your subjects and tell Athens to be supportive and enable them to attach to this army right here. Send this army to Arta, don't go and fight them in Cephalonia, don't engage their army at all, and once all of your troops have been moved to here, dock this navy. You don't want to fight Epirus's navy. We want to keep it alive. And once you've popped off that war, you can go ahead and start spying on the Ottomans. If your fleet somehow manages to engage with Epirus's navy, make sure to call them back. Don't fight that naval battle. And there we go, once you've sieged down Arta and once Epirus's war enthusiasm has become low, you can go ahead and piece them out. In my case, since my ruler had a siege pip, I got it done 1445. If he doesn't have a siege pip in your case, you're gonna get it done 1446. But no big deal. What we're gonna do with Epirus right here is take back our core in Arta, and then we're gonna vassalize them. You can also force your religion on them to take off the age objective for the age of reformation later and you can take all of their money and boom there we go that's your first war done after this war is done you should be able to ally both albania and the knights and there we go those are the only allies that you need to defeat the ottomans once you've allied them you can go ahead and fire your diplo rep advisor and hire a military advisor instead get a morale or discipline guy if you have him a level one guy if you don't it's not that big of a deal I do have a morale guy, so I am gonna hire him. Next, you're gonna take your entire army over to Constantinople, and it's time to wait for these ships to finish building. And once you've allied these guys and pieced out Epirus, with one of your diplomats, you're gonna continue to spy on the Ottomans. With another one, you're gonna improve relations with Hungary, and with the third one, you're gonna improve relations with Epirus once you can. Make sure to tell them to be supportive as well. Still, no rivals, no other advisors, nothing like that. Just waiting for the boats. As your boats are building, make sure you keep congregating them over in Constantinople. At this point, we're not only waiting for these to finish, but we're also waiting for the Ottomans to start their first war. And since we're decently strong ourselves, and because they have truces with Wallachia and Serbia, they won't declare over on this side. Which means their first war, like usually, will be versus one of the Anatolian Beyliks. Karaman, Dulkadir, or Chandar, maybe sometimes Trebizond. And at this point, you can also check their alliances. I've noticed that in this latest patch, they tend to ally Ramazan quite often and not Akuyumu or Tunis like they usually do. And at this point, you can also set your attitude towards them as threatened, something that I forgot to do. You can do this right at the start. So, we're waiting for the boats and for them to declare on someone over here. In my case, it's most likely going to be Chandar, who's allied to Crimea, but it could also be someone else. So that's what we're waiting for. Once they declare their war over here, that's when we'll start our war versus them as well. And don't worry if they've started their war over here earlier than me, or if they eventually start it later than what would have happened in my game right here. Don't worry when it happens. At this point in my game, I can also ally Hungary, and you may be able to do that as well before you declare your war on the Ottomans. And even though I will do this, ally Hungary right at the start, I will not call them into my war versus the Ottomans to show you that you can do it with just Albania and the Knights. Usually, allying Hungary is something you do after you fight the Ottomans. But if you can do this as well, and if you can call them into your war versus the Ottomans, then that's great. Although it's not necessary, you only need Albania and the Knights. And you may notice that in my game it's 1448, and usually by this point the Ottomans already declare. But due to a weird alliance situation in my game, I'm still waiting. In your case, however, you would already be fighting the Ottomans. And of course I'll show you what to do once I start my war with them. And there it is, there's the Ottomans' first war, they seem to have declared on Dulkadir right here, which is allied to Ramazan and his encounter. The easiest war that the Ottomans could find, and this is precisely what we've been waiting for. So, once the Ottomans go ahead and declare on someone over in Anatolia, it's time for us to start a war with them as well. So, right before this, you are gonna go ahead and set the Ottomans as your rival, and you're gonna go ahead and take out a bunch of loans. With these loans, we're gonna be recruiting three mercenary companies. 
So make sure to recruit the free company and then two other mercenary companies preferably with generals with high siege pips. In my case, we have the Hydukes right here, which have a three siege pip guy, so I'm gonna hire them. And then I'm also gonna get the Stratiati right here, which have a two siege guy. There we go, three mercenary companies, all of them in Constantinople. At this point, you're also gonna go ahead and hire an admiral for your navy and pop out the navy in the Sea of Marmara. Now it's time to wait for all of these mercenary companies to recruit. And there we go, now that all of the mercenary companies have recruited, it is time to go ahead and start our war. So what we're gonna do is simply take the free company and attach it to our main army right here, not the mercenary company, and we're gonna go ahead and declare a reconquest for Gallipoli right here. And of course you will call in the Knights and Albania with the promise of land. In my case Albania won't come right away because they're fighting Serbia, but in your case of course you will be able to get both of these guys immediately. And I think this is doable even with just the Knights, so that's why I'm gonna declare. And there's your first war versus the Ottomans, reconquest for Gallipoli, call in Albania and the Knights with the promise of land. And once this war starts, you're immediately going to take this entire stack over to Gallipoli. Once that stack is there, and once you've declared, the Ottomans will immediately move off one of their armies from over here to come and fight you in Gallipoli. That's why we need to get this fort before they get here, so we can prevent them from crossing by controlling this side and having a navy there. And remember, our navy, plus Athens' navy, plus Epirus' navy, plus the Knights' navy, plus Albania's navy, we will defeat the Ottomans' navy very easily. So, once this army is right here, go ahead and bomb the fort immediately, and if you want to, you can also assault it. And by the way, I did end up assaulting this fort. Either way, once you take care of Gallipoli, you should tell the guy with the most siege pips, in my case these guys, to go and siege their capital, and you can tell your main army plus your free company to go siege Salonic, and then with the other Merc company, you should go ahead and siege whichever province you can. Something I forgot to say is before the start of the war, you do want to set these two provinces as provinces of vital interest. So if Albania occupies them, they transfer it over to you. In my case, it doesn't matter because Albania is not even in my war and I still can call them in. So this is definitely proof that you can do it just with the Knights' help. Or maybe you can even do it without any allies. I haven't tried that out yet, but it is probably possible. At this point, if you want to, you can move your fleet over here, bomb Salonic, and then put it back in the Sea of Marmara. It's not necessary, but you can do it if you want to. At this point, you can also check the Ottomans' war access map mode by clicking on them and seeing if they can walk around the Black Sea to get over here. Usually, they won't be able to do this, and you will have trapped them in Anatolia. And we can see that at this point, I can call in Albania, but it's really not necessary. I'll only do this to simulate them being in your war as well. And additionally, once you've taken over one of these two forts, either Salonic or Edirne, you can go ahead and delete the other two mercenary companies, which are not the free company. So only leave the free company and your main army up after that. And there we go. Once you've sieged down all of the Balkans, your war with the Ottomans is pretty much done. At this point, you can go ahead and fight them over in Anatolia if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary at all. Why fight these battles? Why siege more forts? Why use manpower and cash when you don't need to? The worst thing that can happen at this point is the Ottomans somehow gaining access around the Black Sea to get to you, which really shouldn't be possible. Poland and Lithuania and Moldavia don't usually give them access, and I've never seen that happen. So, after you've sieged down all of the Balkans, all you gotta do is sit back and relax and wait for the war score to tick up to max. You should be able to get around 70 something percent. Your allies like Albania and the Knights and maybe even Athens, they may attempt to cross over in Anatolia to siege them down, but usually they'll get beat up. So it's time to chill and wait for the war score to tick up. At this point, to save some money, you can transfer the occupation of these forts over to your subject Athens, and then once you're piecing out, simply transfer it back to you. So there we go, I'm gonna give Salonic, Edirne, and Gallipoli over to Athens. And this way, we're not paying for the Ottomans' as forts. Once you've sieged down the Ottomans, you can recall the diplomat that's been spying on them, and you can go ahead and start spying on Serbia. And like I said, the worst case scenario with Ottoman allies is probably Tunis, the best case is Delkadir from what I've seen. You know the usual suspects that they ally, Akkuyunlu, and in this latest patch they do ally Tlemcen quite often. Of course, these allies aren't a problem, you're just gonna white piece them as soon as their war enthusiasm becomes low. It doesn't matter who the Ottomans as allies are, trust me. And there we go, I've just white pieced Tlemcen and the Ottomans as war enthusiasm is low, and I've gotten my war score with them up to 81%. So. Around this point, it is time to piece them out. 
So go ahead and transfer all of the force that you gave to Athens back to you, and it's time to make our peace deal. And in your first war with the Ottomans, here's what you're gonna take. We're gonna take all of our cores back right here, except for Edirne and this province right here. If we take this province, it'll just go to Bulgaria once we release them, and if we take Edirne, of course we take their capital and then they move their capital, so by not taking it, it's actually easy war score for our second war versus them later. So these cores, except for these two. Then we're also gonna take these two provinces right here, so we can release Bulgaria from them, and then you can also take Avalonia over here if Albania hasn't occupied it. Even if they have, you could give it to Albania alternatively. So these are the provinces you're gonna take right here. After that, we're also gonna get war reps and as much money as we can, which in my case is about 495 ducats. And there we go, that's your first war with the Ottomans done. If you have occupied something over here by chance, you could take something over there. In my case, of course, it's not possible. So that's enough for your first war versus the Ottomans. And there we go, that's done. By this point, you should have a sizable spy network on Serbia, so you can go ahead and claim this province. In my case, I'm gonna claim this one too, since the spy network is pretty high. And then, once we've claimed that, we can go ahead and release Bulgaria, and they'll pop out of these two provinces right here. And there we go, we can reconquer these cores of theirs later. Of course, once you finish this mission, you will be able to take the mission Recover Greece, which gives us permaclaims on some of these areas right here. So, after this war is done, you can go ahead and delete the free company, lower army maintenance to save some money, turn off forts, and just like that, we're already making money. Of course, with all this cash we got from the Ottomans, we can go ahead and pay off a bunch of our loans and basically fix our economy almost immediately. There we go, I've just got 19 more loans left, but we're making decent income. At this point, you can also fire this advisor to make even more money. And there we go. Now it's time to chill for just a little bit to recover our economy, and then we'll immediately move on with our second war, which is going to be versus Serbia if they still exist. They may be guaranteed by the Ottomans in your game, but don't worry. Even if they are guaranteed by the Ottomans, you'll still declare, because the Ottomans still won't be able to cross. So you can just siege them down over here, white piece them, and reset your truce with them so it's not this long, and then take whatever you want from Serbia. Don't worry if they guarantee anyone, it's not a problem. Of course, once this war is done, you can set additional rivals. In my case right here, I'm just gonna rival whoever rivaled me, like Kerman and uh, Genoa, for example. There we go. Don't worry if Albania and the Knights threaten to break their alliance with you after this war, we don't need them. And after this war, you will also probably be able to ally Hungary, something I already did earlier. Additionally, you should also start improving relations with Austria at this point. And like I said, I'll immediately be declaring on Serbia here. In my case, I'm pretty lucky. They don't have any allies. In your game, they might be allied to someone like Bosnia or Herzegovina or someone like that. If they're guaranteed by Hungary, however, which happens very, very rarely, well, then you're just gonna have to bide your time and wait for that. Either way, your second war should be versus Serbia. And there we go. Just declare for the gold mine right here. If you've gotten 10 Patriarch Authority, you can use one of the Orthodox icons, and this is when I've gotten 10 Patriarch Authority, about 10 years after the start of the game, and it's not a bad idea to go with the icon of St. Nicholas right here for improved relations and AE impact in your first wars. Of course, if you don't care about that, you can go with the Death Cost one to speed up the spawning of the Renaissance in Constantinople a bit. These two are good for when you expand a lot later, and these ones are good right here for, for peacetime. I'm gonna go with the icon of Christ Pantocrator for now. And of course, even if you can't take Tech 5 in any category, don't do it before you've gotten the Renaissance. In my case right here, it's at 20 over in Constantinople, so what I'm gonna do is just activate Encourage Development right here and bump it up slightly to 10 in every category. Only after that, once we get the Renaissance, then I'll get Tech 5. You should do the same. Right now, when I'm fighting Serbia, I'm preemptively spying on Bosnia because I'll know I'll fight them later. Once you defeat Serbia, and if you're fighting Serbia and Bosnia, meaning if they're allies, you can go ahead and separate piece Bosnia and make them your vassal. If Bosnia is not in this war, then no big deal. You're simply gonna full annex Serbia. And there we go. That's our second war done. Now, while we're waiting for our truce with the Ottomans to expire, we're sort of cleaning up some of the smaller nations over here around us. And additionally, if 10 years have passed at this point, you are eligible to annex Athens, which you should do. However, first, go ahead and give the nobility the nobility integration policy, so you don't lose diplorep when you annex them, and you can go ahead and annex Athens. This will be instant, since we have a core on them. At this point, once I've expanded a little bit, I can also ally Austria. You should be able to do the same. And there we go, at this point, my allies are Austria and Hungary. 
In your case, it may be just Hungary or just Austria with a PU over Hungary. For your tier 2 government reform, you have a couple of options right here. Obviously, you could go with strength and noble privileges, but we also have manpower right here in our national ideas. And once you get a lot of patriarch authority, you will get manpower from that as well, along with increased levies over here. So this might not be the best choice. You could go with compromise with the nobility, so increased levies no longer gives us penalties, or you could go with noble officer core as well for some cav discount, army tradition, and stuff like that. All three of these right here are very good, so you won't make a mistake with either one of these options. I'm gonna go with strength and noble privileges. Additionally, something I forgot to mention is now we have the Byzantine autocracy tier one government reform, which gives us plus 0.5 yearly prestige and minus 25 max absolutism. This isn't that relevant for now. At this point, you can also break your alliance with Albania. If they, of course, didn't break it with you earlier when you didn't give them anything. Once you embrace the Renaissance, you can sell it to some of your allies to make some money. And you may even be lucky enough to spawn gems in Constantinople. Once a little bit of time has passed, you can go on and declare other wars to take care of the small Balkan nations over here. In my case, I'm going to declare on Bosnia right now. You may have already fought them when you fought Serbia, and they may be your vassal. And I'm also going to vassalize them because I can ask Hungary, my ally, or later Austria-Hungary if Austria PU them, for Bosnia's cores back over here for free. So that's why I'm going to vassalize them. Of course, if they have all of their provinces, you could full annex them if you want to. It's totally up to you. And there we go, now that I've repeated Bosnia, like I said, I will be vassalizing them. I will also force them to be orthodox. Once you've cored up everything over here in this state, make sure to state it and activate the Encourage Development State Edict because we are going to want to develop this gold mine over here to 10 production to make some nice income from gold. And there we go, it's at 10. Once a month takes over, make sure to lower autonomy. And precisely on the 1460s, you should go ahead and lower autonomy everywhere because it may have been rising in certain areas due to our low crownland. And of course, if every estate has more than 50 loyalty, feel free to seize land. And there we go. Once you dev up this gold mine, you will have no more money trouble. At any point, once 10 years have passed, you can go ahead and annex Epirus. Make sure you've given out the nobility integration policy, though. For your naval doctrine, you do have the unique Byzantine one over here, the Tactica, which gives you plus 20% galley combat ability and plus 15% ship disengagement chance. This is probably one of the strongest naval doctrines in the game, and you should definitely go with this one. Also, at any point, you can go ahead and take out new burger loans, just like this, and then you can go ahead and build up your army. Of course, this is after you have the gold mine and you're making lots of money so i'm just gonna bump it up by quite a bit right here almost a force limit in fact exactly the force limit and then you can go ahead and start constructing some buildings as well i recommend putting down marketplaces first especially in constantinople this will help us make some nice income then you can do one in macedonia as well athens pretty much all the centers of trade once you hit admin tech 5 you will be able to take your first idea group and we do have a new idea groups added in 135 infrastructure ideas court ideas and mercenary ideas along with some changes to admin and economic and policies and stuff like that so the idea groups have changed around a bit but the principles are the same now as byzantium merc ideas would actually go pretty well with our national ideas right here and all of these are pretty good idea groups but either way as byzantium for your first idea group i do recommend quality ideas this will help us make our armies even more powerful and add to the military bonuses that we already have but they'll also buff our navies as well and we do want to have a pretty powerful navy of course especially if you're going for a roman empire campaign and if you're planning on fighting the italian nations the iberian guys france and the mamluks and these northern african guys so quality is really a no-brainer so quality for your first idea group we're already focusing on mill so we're good and now that my truce with albania is up i will be declaring on them like i said we're continuing to clean up these balkan miners until our truce with the ottomans is up only do this if your allies will help you though because as you know they are guaranteed by venice and venice is super annoying to fight so what I'll do before this war is simply set every province over here as a province of interest because we do want to go for these Venetian provinces down here as well. You might do that in this war versus Albania or in a separate war versus Venice you declare later on. Either way, it doesn't matter. You can go ahead and declare on Albania if your allies will help like they will in my case. And there we go. That's my third war after I've dealt with the Ottomans. You get the point by now. Serbia, Bosnia, maybe Wallachia, Albania. Those are the guys we're fighting. And there we go. I've beaten up Venice. I'm actually not going to take anything in this war. I'm just going to make them end their alliance with Genoa. And just like that, the war with Albania is done. And I'll be full annexing them as well. Later, we'll take care of these Venetian provinces. You may have taken some in this war as well. And of course, once your truce with the Ottomans is up, you will be declaring your second war against them. Hungary or Austria or Austria-Hungary should be able to help you 
you out in this war. You may have gotten some additional allies like Castile, Aragon, Poland. It's totally up to you who your allies are. Just make sure to call them in. The Ottomans will have reconsolidated a little bit by this point, even though in my game, they haven't actually expanded at all since the start. And I do find that to be the case pretty often with the Ottomans in this latest patch. Either way, we're simply going to declare a reconquest for one of Bulgaria's cores, like that one, for example, right there. And that's your second war with the Ottomans started. Here, we're gonna get all of Bulgaria, our cores back, and maybe something else over here in Anatolia. Once again, put your fleet in the Sea of Marmara and go ahead and siege these guys down. And there we go, two naval victories with the help of our naval doctrine. We did have less boats in both of those. And there we go, I've defeated the Ottomans in my second war. This was more annoying than the first war since we did have to cross here and they were allied to a very powerful Tunis. Luckily, Tunis got declared on by Castile and uh, Portugal so I could white piece them. And that is your second war with the Ottomans done. And like I said, in the second war, we are going to give Bulgaria all of their cores back right here. We're going to take these two provinces for ourselves, just like that. And then you could also take these three provinces in this area right here. And then if you can, take some money. That's our second war with the Ottomans done. At this point, they are not in the Balkans anymore and we can continue our push towards Anatolia. But most importantly, once we take over all of Bulgaria right here, we can take the mission Conquer Bulgaria. Now in the past, this mission just gave us some claims, but now in this latest update, we get to enact the reformed Byzantine monarchy tier one government reform, which basically switches us out of this into that. Now. That enables a parliament mechanic for Byzantium, which is similar to what England slash Great Britain has and stuff like that. But we also gain minus 0.05 monthly autonomy change, minus five years of separatism, a culture conversion discount of minus 20%, and max possible parliament seats plus eight, which doesn't really matter too much, along with the claims that we previously got. This is one of the changes that Byzantium has received along with its original tier one government reform. Let's see what this looks like. And there we go, we are no longer a Byzantine autocracy, instead now we're a reformed Byzantine monarchy. And we gain all of those modifiers that I just said. And of course, we do have the Senate right here, which is pretty much, you know, the Parliament from England, but in a more Roman fashion. And of course, you know the bonuses we can get from this, you can choose this, then bribe these guys to get that reform to pass, and I do think it's a very fun way to play Byzantium, and this sort of also leans into the whole thing that we're basically a successor to the Roman Empire, or pretty much already the Roman Empire. So, you can go ahead and give out some seeds right here. We can see that I need four in my case. So, of course, I'm going to give a seat to Constantinople, just like that. Maybe one to this province. It is pretty highly developed. We can put one more in Athens, too. And why not one over here? And there we go. Now we have enough seats. We can go ahead and start a debate. And in my case right here, this seems to be a really good one for 30 gov reform progress and plus 25% reform progress growth. Pretty strong for going through all of these reforms. So I'm just going to select that. And then we can lose one legitimacy to prime these guys, lose one army tradition to bribe those guys, and then we can uh, lose 125 manpower to bribe the final guys. And there we go. We've passed the reform. Excellent. And for your tier 3 government reform, I recommend going for centralized monarchical bureaucracy. Even more culture conversion will lean into the whole thing that we already have from this. Or alternatively, if you don't feel like this gives enough benefits, you can go with expand a royal court. Both of these are pretty good. I'm going to go with centralized monarchical bureaucracy. You won't make a mistake with either one of them. And just like that, at this point, only 30 years into the game, we've become a great power. What we're seeing right here is some Byzantine separatists sieging down Rhodes. And after this happens, and after a couple of years pass, Rhodes will go over to us because there are separatists. This happens quite often in my games when I'm playing Byzantium, and it could also happen to either of these three provinces right here. So you could get these two Genoese provinces or Rhodes for free just through your separatists. Excellent. Once you've beaten up the Ottomans, you can go ahead and delete some forts that aren't very necessary. Now that I have some more favors with Hungary, what I'm going to do is simply ask them to give me back some of Bosnia's cores that they own. Pretty simple. We're going to go into return core province down here and we can see that we have enough favors for them to give back this one. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. They have these two other Bosnian cores that I'm going to ask for later once I have more favors. And then once they integrate Croatia, I'm also going to ask for this one. Pretty simple way to get back Bosnia scores without fighting any wars. Of course, later we will be breaking our lands with Hungary or with Austria-Hungary, depending on what they look like. But for now, we still need their help, at least until we own all of this. And there we go, we can see that Rhodes has gone over to us. Now these guys have moved to these Genoese provinces. Unfortunately, the Ottomans are going to wipe them out. But still, you get the point on how it happens. 
Once you've given back Bulgaria all of their cores, of course you can go ahead and start annexing them as well. Once you have a statesman, basically a diplorap advisor, and have two stab, you will be able to take the mission Formalize Separation of Powers. You'll only be able to do this after you have the Senate though, and these are the bonuses it gives you. Of course you should do this. For a first stage ability, you should take Justified Wars. Once a little bit of time has passed after your war with the Ottomans, you can go ahead and continue to clean up the Balkan miners. In my case, I've already done that. So if you've already done that as well, it's time to move on to Venice now. In my case, of course, I still can't do that because they've got an allied Castile right now, and Castile does also have Aragon, so this will be pretty tricky in my case, so that's why I'm going to look for additional allies to help me in this war. But like I said, after you've dealt with the Ottomans for the second time, you can go ahead and fight Venice, while we're waiting for a third war with the Ottomans. A new champion of the Joust is always nice, a general with 100 tradition, 425 prestige and legitimacy. Let's see if the one I got is pretty good right here, and he isn't actually that good. Once you hit Admin Deck 7, you will be able to take your second idea group, and of course, as an Orthodox nation, and specifically as Byzantium, what better idea group than religious? So you should definitely go with religious ideas for your second idea group. This will help us with the missionaries and missionary strength to convert all of those non-Orthodox provinces. This is really strong too, manpower and true faith provinces, and all of them are going to be true faith at some point, so that's like plus 10% manpower. And of course, this CB right here is excellent as well. We'll have a CB versus any nation we won't need to spy and claim and stuff like that. In my game right here, the Venice situation has gotten even worse because they've allied Bohemia. Of course, hopefully in your game, you will have already fought Venice by now, and you will own maybe all of their provinces that they have in the Balkans, which is what you should do. Unfortunately, in my game, I'm not having a lot of luck with that. And there we go, actually, another province has defected over to me via Rebels, the province of Lesbos. At this point, I just asked Hungary for another Bosnian core back. Now, after you beat up the Ottomans in your first, but probably in your second war, other nations will start pouncing on them as well. As you can see in my case right here, the Mamluks have fought them, taken some provinces from them, and they've also made them release Aretna and Aydin. And of course, if you can declare on some of these minor nations that might pop out of the Ottomans, you should go ahead and do it. In my case, I'm going to declare an Aiden, since the Mamluks have revoked their guarantee on them, and I already have claims from my mission. So if you can do something like this, go ahead and do it. Like I said, ideally, you'd be fighting Venice. I just can't do that in my case. And now that I've defeated Aiden, I'll be full annexing them. Right now, I'm still waiting for the truce with the Ottomans to expire, but I've also allied the Pope and Muscovy, and the Pope will help me out versus Venice. And I do think like this, by calling in all of these guys, we're almost matched with the other side. It'll be pretty easy to piece out Bohemia. Of course, we won't have naval superiority because we'll have Castile and Aragon involved, but I do think it's worth a shot to take some of Venice's provinces. And by piecing these guys out one by one, we can do this. This doesn't usually happen when you have to fight Venice. They usually won't have this powerful allies or be this strong. But like I said, I've been unlucky in this regard in my campaign. So there we go. Now I'll be declaring on Venice. You've probably already taken all of their provinces in the Balkans by this point in the game. And like I said, I'm going to focus on taking out Bohemia first. And at this point, I've also annexed Bulgaria. And as you can see, that Byzantine naval doctrine is super powerful. I've just defeated 41 Castilian ships with my 25. Another naval victory versus Venice, as we can see right here. This Byzantine naval doctrine is honestly overpowered, guys. At this point, I'm also going to knock out Genoa for this one province right here. And Castile has finally agreed to white peace. And there we go. This war wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be. And of course, once you do beat up Venice, make sure to take these islands down here first, since we do need them for a mission, and then take as much as you can going up this coast over here. So I think I'm going to take everything up to here. Unfortunately, Zara and Istria are occupied by Hungary and Croatia, even though I do want these provinces as well. So I'm just going to take all of this down here, along with war reps and some money. And that's my war with Venice done. You should have done something similar to this, basically taking as much as you can over in the Balkans. After you do this, and after you fight some of these guys down here, get defected provinces, fight Genoa, you will be able to take the mission to recover the eastern islands. We gain some claims on Naples, and you can also recover Albania, where we gain some claims on these things right here. And some islands too. Of course, if you have the Purple Phoenix DLC, you will be able to triumph for all of these areas and gain some nice little bonuses. And I'll finally ask Hungary for the final Bosnian core that they own back. Well, of course, once it's unseized from these Catholic zealots. And there's that core back. Excellent, Bosnia almost has all of its cores back. As soon as Hungary integrates Croatia, we'll get one more. And of course, in this latest update, be careful when you slacken recruiting standards. We don't get manpower anymore. So uh, there's really no need to do this. And once your truce with the Ottomans is up, you'll declare your third war against them. By this point, they may have been beaten up by some other nations, like in my case over here, or even if they haven't, you're still gonna fight them. In my case, they don't have any allies, so there's no need for me to call in anyone. 
And there's my third war with the Ottomans. For your tier 4 government reform, state and religion right here, as an orthodox nation, a nation that leans heavily into the whole missionary and conversion stuff, like us, it is the best to go with grant land to the monasteries. This will give us yearly patriarch authority, clergy loyalty, and then constructing churches will also give us some clergy loyalty and stuff like that. Also, religious culture no longer gives us any bad things. And then you can go ahead and give out religious culture. This gives us some very nice bonuses in accepted faith orthodox provinces and the penalties for non-accepted faith, non Byzantine cultured provinces, basically non-Greek cultured provinces, isn't that bad. It's just local unrest, and then we do gain bonuses to culture conversion. So you can stack lots of culture conversion discounts as Byzantium, and you can actually go ahead and convert some cultures instead of accepting them. Is it more expensive? Of course it is, but honestly, you can do what you want. And once you do defeat the Ottomans in your third war against them, you're going to take as much as you can. By this point, you're in Anatolia, and you're primarily going to focus on their coastline. So what I'm going to do right here is simply take all of this just like that, and don't worry about the aggressive expansion. People aren't really going to be mad about this. So I'm just going to take the coastline now, finish this off later, and we can also push into a retina because I'll gain a border with them. That's about enough for now. I could have, of course, taken more, but I am kind of low on admin points. Like I said, in your third war, take as much as you want. At this point, I am going to go ahead and declare on a retina right here since they don't have any allies. After we finished our third war with Byzantium, we're sort of looking to poke into small nations that surround us. In my case right here, it's Aretna, Trebizond, maybe some of these guys up here. Or, alternatively, you could also go ahead and fight Naples if they don't have any strong allies, which in my case they don't, so I will probably hit them after my war with Aretna is done. We're basically looking to clean up small nations around us before moving on to the big boys, which are going to be the Mamluks. You are going to need Austria and Hungary's help to beat them up in your first war. After you take everything in Anatolia, you can go ahead and break your alliance with these guys as well and find other allies to help you beat up Austria and Hungary, like France, Muscovy, Poland, Castile. You get the point. But for now, like I said, it is time to fight Aretna. And this very quick and easy war is done. I will be full annexing Aretna. Like I said, you don't care about aggressive expansion when fighting in Anatolia. Right now, I'm also going to use my favors to make the Pope break their alliance with Naples since I want to fight them. Oop, it looks like they actually won't accept. There we go. After some improving relations, they will accept. And yeah, like I said, once you've taken care of all the miners in the Balkans and all of the miners in Anatolia and you're waiting to fight the Ottomans again or getting ready to fight the Mamluks, you can go ahead and declare on Naples if your allies will join you and if they don't have any strong allies. Sometimes they ally Austria, sometimes they ally France, sometimes they get pewed again by Castile, but in my case right here, it is a good opportunity to declare on them. This is just a bonus. You don't have to fight Naples if you can. This is what you should follow along with. This is just a bonus. So I'm just going to declare for Salento, for example, and call on Hungary and Austria. And now that I've defeated Naples, it is time to peace them out. Be careful if you're fighting over in Italy. These are Catholic nations, and if you fought Venice recently, AE might be high-ish with some of them. So we don't care about AE right here, but we do care about it right here. So be careful what you're taking. I'm going to take these provinces right here. Let's check the coalition map mode. Still no risk. And let's see if we can do something like this. And that seems to be good enough for now. We'll take care of the rest of Naples later. And I'll take Wurreps and all of their money. And there we go. Now we're expanding in southern Italy as well. Of course, if this is not your goal, or if you couldn't do this, don't worry about it. This and this are our primary areas of expansion in the first 70-ish years. This is also around the time where you'll start converting everything. The estates seem a lot less influential in this pad, and even though I have so many privileges granted to the clergy, their influence is still super low. So if you want to convert even faster and even more, you can give out enforced unity of faith as well. And by around the 1500s, your game should look a little something like this. Basically, we start off as Byzantium and did the classic Byzantium opening strategy that has been relevant for about a patch or two right now, and I can definitely say that the Ottomans are not harder to defeat at the start as Byzantium. We start off by fighting Epirus, vassalizing them, first war with the Ottomans, took back our cores, released Bulgaria, second war, reconquered Bulgaria, took all of the Balkans, third war, expanded over in Anatolia and took their coastline, and in the meantime, while we were waiting for those truces to expire, we were cleaning up some of the Balkan miners, such as Albania, Serbia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, any Anatolian miners that might have been released from the Mamluks, or any other nation fighting the Ottomans, and then you should have also fought Venice as well at this point to take all of their provinces in the Balkans, and an additional bonus, if you could have, this is not something that's necessary, you might have fought Naples. And by this point, I am the number three great power in the world, you should be up top as well, anywhere from number one to number five. This is everything I own right now, you may be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller in my case, but nothing can stop us after this point. During this point, of course, we haven't only been expanding, you should have been constructing buildings as well. I have marketplaces in all of the center of trade provinces, and they are all upgraded to tier two centers of trade, except for this one, obviously. 
obviously a bunch of workshops built in the high value trade good provinces you already know them by now any trade good that wor that's worth more than two ducats a couple of churches here and there as well pretty sizable fleet with three heavies and 21 galleys as we can see and a light ship fleet here protecting trade over in constantinople and the army isn't half bad either 24 4 7 right now which is sort of what it's supposed to look like during this point i have also been culture converting some provinces right here to greek some cultures are accepted such as bulgarian and turkish we'll be converting those later on as well if we have any spare diplo points which i in fact do right now so i'm just gonna go ahead and start converting some of the cheaper ones why not since we already have such a big discount as byzantium it is something to do i guess and of course during this point you should have also started your conversion of all the non-orthodox provinces which i have started over in this area right here and that will go very very smoothly with all of the measuring strength bonuses that we have you won't have any trouble converting them and after this point you'll continue to expand in the same directions we've already been expanding in after you consolidate all of the balkans and in a told you and you're only left with the big boys such as the mamluks and austria hungary you will use austria and hungary and maybe some other allies as well to help you beat up the mamluks in one or two wars take all of anatolia from them take this right here after that once you're done with the mamluks you can also break your alliance with austria and hungary to take most importantly the provinces in the balkans from them in this region right here in the ragusa trade node and after that you can continue to push on into italy maybe you already have a foothold there if you've expanded into naples if not you'll get there later so after you consolidate the balkans in anatolia go ahead and push into Caucasia into the Mashri in Egypt after that in Italy the Maghreb Iberia France if you're going for a Roman Empire if you're not going for a Roman Empire however I feel like this area right here is pretty good to expand into or maybe something like this over here but those should be your expansion goals of course everything is based on your opportunities at this point of course money isn't a problem making 20 ducats a month right now which isn't bad at all we will start making even more once we conquer even more once we start building the relevant buildings workshops and manufactories and once we get some very nice ideas and speaking of ideas we did open up with quality and religious the old opening which is still relevant for your third idea group you should go with a money making idea group such as economic or trade even though economic has been slightly nerfed now it doesn't have the dev discount anymore that has gone over to infrastructure ideas and this one is pretty good too not that much immediately for making money but it does have some money making bonuses either way i still recommend economic more it has goods produced now as well so for your third idea group economic or trade for your fourth idea group i recommend taking a mill one such as offensive so quality religious economic or trade offensive and then the other one that you didn't take for your third one once again economic or trade and then for this one right here you could once again go with a mill one such as defensive you won't really need quantity you could go with aristo or defensive or something like that and after that it's up to you so quality religious economic or trade then offensive then once again economic or trade and then defensive or aristocratic this is what we took for our first four government reforms of course we started out as a byzantine autocracy now we're a byzantine monarchy strength and noble privileges compromise with the nobility or noble officer core for tier two for tier three centralized monarchical bureaucracy or expanded royal court for tier four you should of course go for grant land to the monasteries i explained why this is good for tier five you should go with organized military staff however if you're going for a merc heavy gameplay as byzantium or something like that you can choose one of the mercenary options right here for tier six you should go with a royal decree for tier seven you should go with meritocratic recruitment for tier eight you should go with empower the burgers or embrace the economic theory they're both pretty good for tier nine the social contract is pretty good but then again you won't really have heathen and heretic provinces you'll be converting them so alternatively you could go with this one right here for tier 10 all of them are pretty good you won't make a mistake choosing either one of them pick whichever one you need at the moment and it's the same for tier 11 all of them are really good you won't make a mistake choose whichever one you need at the moment and like i said by around the 1500s your realm should look a little something like this let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that i should do a guide on if you want to watch me do stuff like this live you can follow me on twitch.tv slash live and if you want to catch up on stuff from over there you can subscribe to the second channel link is in the description if you enjoyed this video don't ask think to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video